Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today, we're gonna to be exploring a question that we've all asked ourselves. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now here, we have two ASI 2600 cameras. And they both look identical, but how they look is about where the line is drawn with their similarities. They each vary in their performance capabilities, how they operate, as well as their demand on the users. And today, we're gonna to be exploring their differences, their pros, their cons, and ultimately, get a better understanding of each so we can answer the question, what's better for me, mono or one-shot color? First, let's break down what these two types of imaging are. One-shot color cameras capture all of the color data in a single exposure. They have a Bayer matrix filter over the sensor which separates the light into red, green, and blue pixels. On the other hand, mono cameras capture light without a Bayer matrix filter, requiring separate exposures through red, green, and blue filters to create a color image. One-shot color cameras are generally easier to use and faster to set up. Each exposure you take captures all of the color data without needing to switch between different filters for each color you want, which can save you a lot of time, especially if you're working under changing weather conditions or have limited time under the stars. This is especially true if you want to just be able to set up and capture a full image in just a few hours, which is just not possible with the monochrome counterpart. However, they can be less sensitive to light as compared to mono cameras, and the Bayer matrix filter can introduce artifacts, added noise, and can reduce the overall resolution and quality of the image. One-shot color cameras also don't offer the same level of control over your imaging as monochrome cameras do. And let's not forget the convenience of simple image sequences. Set your exposure time, the number of frames you want to take, as well as fewer files to keep track of. And that's what One Shot Color is all about, convenience. Now, let's jump into mono. Mono cameras, on the other hand, offer higher sensitivity and resolution because they don't have a Bayer matrix. This means you can capture more detail and fainter objects. They also allow you to have complete control over your image since you're using separate filters to capture each color as well as capturing narrowband data through the use of hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, and sulfur 2 filters. This allows you to have each wavelength of light imaged individually, allowing you control over the integration and how you capture each channel. This also allows you to have complete control over how you process your data. You can build the popular Hubble color palettes from scratch, all while maintaining the quality of the image. The increased resolution capability of the monochrome camera allows you to be able to resolve the faintest details of an object. As an added bonus, monochrome cameras are not as vulnerable to light pollution as their one-shot color counterparts. All of this sounds absolutely amazing, however, there are still drawbacks to the monochrome world. Monochrome cameras require more equipment and time, as you'll need to take multiple exposures through different filters and then combine them in post-processing. This also means more complex imaging sequences in order to capture the different color channels you need versus a one-shot color camera. It's not required, but definitely a good idea to have an electronic filter wheel that can automatically change the filters as needed during an imaging sequence. Unlike the one-shot color counterpart, which will generally use the same filter, a monochrome camera will need to switch filters in order to get the data that you need, and sometimes this may happen during an imaging session, and sometimes multiple times during an imaging session. The electronic filter wheel allows you to change your filters when you need without disturbing your setup. Also, keeping a close eye on your files and staying highly organized is key, as monochrome users must be able to handle a lot more files than a one-shot color user. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of an image taken with both types of cameras. 
This is IC5070 Pelican Nebula taken with my ASI 2600 MC one-shot color camera and Skywatcher 200D telescope. And here's IC5070 taken with my ASI 2600MM monochrome camera and Skywatcher 200P telescope. As you can see, the mono image has more detail and less noise, but the one-shot color image is still quite impressive and was much quicker to capture. Taking a deeper look, let's examine the one-shot color image. As you can see, there's a lot of detail that's left behind due to the Bayer matrix of the one-shot color sensor. Now, looking at the same area of the image that was taken with the monochrome version, the detail, color, and overall quality is very evident. Post-processing is another area where these two types of imaging differ. With one-shot color, the workflow is generally simpler and faster. With mono, you'll need to combine the separate exposures, which can be more complex but also offers more control over the final image, as you can combine the different exposures in different ways to achieve the color palette of your choice. You also have the ability to add natural RGB stars to your narrowband nebula, or hydrogen alpha data to your galaxies and a whole bunch of different combinations in between. In my personal workflow within PixInsight, I'll generally perform a local histogram equalization on a one-shot color image in order to bring out some more of the detail. The added resolution of a monochrome image does not require this step to be performed. However, there are some added steps in the correction phases of the monochrome images that we'll be going over in later videos. So, which one is better? There's really no right or wrong answer to this question. It really comes down to your needs and preferences. Each type of imaging is its own world with its own needs. One really isn't harder than the other. It just comes down to dedication level and patience level. Some people start with monochrome and eventually turn to one-shot color just for the ease and convenience of it. Other people start with one-shot color and turn to monochrome and never look back. If you're looking for a simple, faster setup and are okay with a bit less detail, one-shot color might be the way to go. If you're after the highest possible image quality and don't mind spending more time on setup and post-processing, mono's probably the better choice. No matter which one you choose, you're bound to capture breathtaking images of our beautiful universe. Stay tuned as we dive into the monochrome world. So I hope that you found this useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. Your support really helps me bring more content to you. Also, make sure to check out the perks that come along with joining a membership, such as early access to content, Discord server, and my personal master light files to practice alongside me in my tutorials. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Drop a comment in the comment section. Which method are you currently using for imaging? Do you have any questions? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.